Hello! I'm back. I hope you are too. And if you are a regular, thank you so much for your support. Day in, day out. I really appreciate it. If it's your first time here, thank you. Thank you for taking the plunge and clicking on the video. I appreciate that as well. And what am I up to today? Well, it's a mildly sunny day, a very breezy day, and that's a great day to take care of my Phalaenopsis Schilleriana. She is doing really well, and I would like to keep it that way. And for that reason, you can see on the date, she has been in that same pot for over two years. So what we're going to do is, yes, you guessed it, it probably says it on the title, we're going to take her out of the pot. The reason I'm doing it now, she is just maturing her first leaf of this growing season, which is wonderful. I love how it's progressing. I lost two leaves earlier this year. When she started to push out roots, she decided to dump leaves. So I'm always like thinking, am I not giving her enough to sustain her new structures? Or is this a trait? Now I'm, I'm only unpotting her because it's been two years. I'm not doing it because I'm worried about anything. I have no concerns at this point. I hope she doesn't convince me otherwise. So I'm going to see how to pour her out. Maybe I'll just start with taking off the surface and watching what falls off without stressing any new growing tips. Trying to avoid that as much as possible. Oh, as much as I love this setup, not seeing these roots flat and in their little bizarre way, I, that's the only downside. All right, working with the orchid, not against her. Let's see. Oh, you can go back in here. Let's see. Yes, that is to be expected that some roots have died off and we'll take care of that. But all in all, I've got quite a good thing going on in here. Looks like a snake, doesn't it? Absolutely amazing. I've got enough good going on in here that I don't have to be too worried. The old roots from when I got her, I'm not surprised that they're compromised. We'll take care of that. And uh, we'll give her a little cleanup and pot her up again and in a bigger pot, I would say. Yeah, I'm going to get a bigger pot and uh, put her in that. I'll be right back. So this works really well. This is the clean lecker still from inside the pot. I had two or three pieces that were like debris in there and I just picked it out. And I don't need to flush this out and reuse it. I can just use it as it is because it's relatively clean. I have also already put in a microfiber into the new pot. So filled up the old lecker also in and around it. My usual loop is in there. It may be too high at this point because those roots are quite long and um, there was not much damage to them. Let me show you. I have taken off all the dead bits all the way back to the healthy tissue. Let me show you what I mean by that. So you can see how a root has died back and I took it to the healthy tissue. In this case, yellow, not the green. But other than that, I think this is pretty much job done for now. This is the branch I'm a little concerned about. I don't find these to have a branching root characteristic, but I could be totally wrong, simply because I don't see them or the environment that I'm growing them in, my method, um, doesn't let them branch freely. But if you grow Chilleriana and have something similar on a mount or something, then would you let me know if they are branching roots or not? I would be really interested. Now I can see 
There's a little bit of something white on the bottom there, which I don't like. So I'm going to get some hydrogen peroxide and just spray the base. I don't know what that is. I don't like it. It could just be salt buildup, which is not good either. It doesn't have to be anything pest wise, but I don't like it. So I'm just going to go and get some hydrogen peroxide. I'll be right back. Let's give it a little bit of a spray down here. Alrighty. Oh, the smell of hydrogen peroxide is not pleasant. Now, in here I have fertilized water because I wasn't expecting to spray with hydrogen peroxide. So I'm going to have to change that out. And while that's soaking there or fizzing away a little bit, I'm going to take this back, put it in its dark location so that it doesn't get ruined. And while I let the hydrogen peroxide do its thing, this is plain RO water at 6.3, which for me with my LECA at this point, I don't want it that high. So I'm just going to lower the pH a smidgen and um, make it more conducive to my LECA, which is normally at a pH of eight based on the fact that my tap water is super high and I can't get it low even when soaking the LECA. So I want a bit more of an acidic mixture in the reservoir so that the LECA counteracts it a bit and comes out towards the roots a little bit more balanced. Let's have a look-see. Yep, if you can see that screen, it's 5.69 and I'll take that. That's fine. Seeing as that is the only thing that's going to be in the reservoir, I'm okay. By the time it reaches the roots wicking up through the LECA, it'll be at a 5.8, 5.9, which is great, which is perfect. Now, have I got these too high or not? No, I don't. No, we can do just what we're doing now. Maybe a little less because I don't want to compromise this branching root here. Doesn't hurt to be a little bit prudent. Try not to skip a step simply because you're on camera. <laughs> do what you normally would do. All right. Let's see, let's see. Do I like it like that? What about you sticking out like that? Can I get you in? Without breaking you? Hmm, one more thing. If in doubt, just a quick little fire away, which might do something, it might not. Is it hydrating? It looks like it's going a bit darker. And let's see if we can do this with less damage. Take out a bit more. You can always fill in afterwards. Now she is a wonderful leaning orchid, but as she is now going in a setup with where I want the roots to be happy for a few years. I'm going to have her a little bit more upright and centered in the pot so that the weight won't pull her out as she grows. And in two years, we can do all of this again because I hope by that time she has moved herself to about here. So right now she's bang smack in the middle. All right, let's hold her carefully and shake a little bit and see where we get to. And as I shake, I'm pressing down gently so she doesn't dislodge herself and rise. All 
All right, so here I have a root that I'm going to try and keep in the pot. It's like a 3D puzzle. I was so happy when I, when they came out, 3D puzzles. I thought they were the coolest ever. And the first one I think I built was the world. And then like a globe. And then I built um, the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> there we go. And then they collected a lot of dust. <laughs> and All righty, there goes another bead. Okay, now I'm going to give her another little shake, pressing down, because I'm not, I'm not going to, the reason I'm not pulling her up to level out the pot this time is because as the roots grow, she will rise up all, all of her own accord. And I can, can then see how the roots are developing inside. So I'm leaving her, in this case, a little lower. There's a little bit more humidity around the base. The base is not buried at all. It remains on the top, despite the fact that orchid being lower. So I'm speculating, and what I saw her do in the last couple of years is how she rises up out of the pot also gives me a little bit more stability with those leaves and I'm going to also maybe right here this root in here there we go can you see that this root is used to being covered up because it's completely white so I am going to focus some leka more over the top of that root, small lecker. So I just picked out the smaller of the lecker. Maybe we can get rid of this size as well and get really picky. We have plenty of it. And just focus on this size lecker bead over the top of that root that is used to being covered up so that it doesn't have a change in its environment at all. So here we go. Now I am expecting another leaf to actually grow. This is the first leaf. I would like to see one more Miss, Miss Schilleriana. One more would be nice. And then just give it a bit of a pour with that lowered pH plain RO water and back in the pot she goes. And that wasn't too bad of an exercise. Some small little details to be aware of. Trying not to damage the leaves. I don't know what that white stuff was, but we've taken care of whatever it is. And she remains in this pot, hopefully another two years. No issues at all. Let's see how big we can get these structures to grow in the coming two years. That is my repot of Phalaenopsis chilleriana. It wasn't a big sensation, but I thought it was also of interest regarding how this specific species works out in semi-hydro, what the roots look like after two years, and maybe somebody is interested in this, you know? Maybe they're transitioning to this growing method or have one and it's doing the same, if yours is mounted, is it branching the roots more? I'd, I'd really be interested. I cannot grow this particular one mounted. I would not be able to keep up. But here we are. I hope that you found this interesting. If there are any questions at all that I haven't covered, I didn't circle back around, I really would appreciate that you leave them in the comment section below and I will get back to you on that. It only leaves me to say, I hope you have a wonderful day. Really thank you for being here. Take care. Bye.